Hello again, EWM geeks from all over the world. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Till Hendrik. You should know that in the meantime. And today I have a new video for you from the series Working as this SAP EWM Consultant. The video series where I try to give you tricks, tools, experiences from my last, let's say, around 15 years of work as a SAP EWM Consultant. With this video, I collected five tools for you, tools for EWM Consultants. You could also call it life hacks. At the end of the day, it's things, software and hardware that I use and that really boosts my productivity and improves my very own user experience daily. Now, I will not give you uh, affiliate links and stuff like that. I will show you specific uh, software and, and hardware and then you can make of it what you want. And I'm pretty sure that one or the other tool that I present to you is something that will also help you in your daily life or work as an EWM consultant or even as a developer. One is a note-taking app. Now, this is something that you should use as kind of a treasury. Uh, I use it, for example, for recurring requirements, stuff that I need to deliver all over again, but I just cannot memorize. So I, I, I drop it there and next time it's required, I can easily find it. It's, it's usually uncommon configurations, things that's not well documented in the standard literature or in the, in the help in the system and the SAP books. There yeah, are solutions that are very project specific that you develop with your team and you think you might want to reuse it again or simply ideas or finding stuff that you saw in the coding that is not documented anywhere else. I drop it in a, in a note taking app. For example, OneNote, that's the one that I'm using right now. I also tried Evernote. Uh, I tried Notion. Uh, both are working. Notion is very powerful. Uh, it's on my list to explore it a bit further. But right now I'm using one or there are multiple other options out there. It doesn't really matter which one you use. The most important thing is that you remember to drop the important stuff there and then also add keywords or something that you can reuse to find the stuff again. Uh, I, I often use text uh, that, for example, if I find something about the put-away strategy in EWM that I want to reuse, then I add text like <laughs> put-away strategy or let's say the body or the strategy itself, the, the name of the field and the customizing, something like that. Like that. I take my notes and then I can use the search function of the given app or tool later again to find it. As I said, that's your treasury. You should also maintain it like a treasury because this is something that saves you a lot of time in the future. This is something that you can also share with your team. If you are working in a um, team over a long time, you can have a common treasury and put your stuff over there. If you are a freelancer and hopping from project to project, customer to customer, you probably have your very own treasury. My tip number two is a diagramming tool. I mentioned that also in this video about how to start with EWM or how to become a good EWM consultant. At the end, EWM is all about processes. And processes are sitting in the center. That's the core of what all your EWM and software related tasks are about. And that also means that you should center your, your work around those processes. And that also means that it is important to find a way to visualize those processes in a way that different stakeholders you are working with can understand the process and you can use this visualization to leverage and simplify the communication. Uh, so if you talk to business teams, gathering requirements, defining the processes, the to-be processes from material flow and also from software perspective, it's, it's a great tool and it's essential. And also if you talk to for instance, developers, if you write specifications, you might want to use process flows, either material flow related or also system software related, rather technical in this case, to simplify the communication and avoid misunderstandings. And to draw processes, you can, of course, 
use uh, NSVSIO, that's the most obvious one. Uh, most of you might probably have it included in the office suite. But I what I want to show you here is draw.io as a free alternative to Visio. Some of you might know that. For those of you who do not know draw.io, I think it's worth it to give it a try. You don't need a user, you don't need a login. There are endless templates and shapes with common notations like UML or VPNN. And you can integrate into Jira or Notion. I mentioned that before. Google Docs, Google Docs that uh, some of you might use in, instead of MS Office and many more. Let's just have a very quick insight into draw.io before we get back here. You see you can open it in the browser. You can also download a desktop version. And when you start it, when you open draw.io, it asks you to create a new diagram. There are so many templates out there that you will probably never have to create your own template version. Or you can take one of the templates and then adjust it slightly to meet your requirements. I go for a swim lane now, which is typically used to, to draw business processes with different stakeholders. But you see here, on the left, you have, you have lots of different topics and uh, templates from those topics and you, you can select from. So we go for a basic swim lane diagram and you see already it gives you uh, like the, the main shapes in, in swim lanes. But if you want, you can also uh, get, get more shapes. For example, if you want to draw with UML or if you want to draw, let's say, BPMN, which is a common and uh, widely used standard, you can add those shapes here to your list on the left and then here you can choose the standard BPMN shapes or as I said before, uh, UML is also available. And you can use this in the browser or download a desktop version. It's worth it to give it a try, give it a try. just wanted to give you a short insight here. With that, let's get uh, to uh, tool and tip number three. Before we proceed, just a quick reminder that this channel lives from you subscribing and of course hitting the like button. So please do that real quick before we proceed with the next point. Thanks a lot and back to Hendrik. And number three is a screenshotter. I actually don't know whether the word screenshotter exists, but I thought it would be a good one to describe what I uh, want to highlight here. And in the screenshot tool, I think is again, one of the most frequently used tools and software that I use in my daily uh, work. Like I think screenshots are crucial to, to convey complex information easily and efficiently. For example, I use it, uh, and, and I, I'm very sure you also use it when you create user manuals. Yeah, for the end users, they don't want to work with text. They want to see what they later have to uh, do in the system and in the dialogues. If you communicate issues, for instance, you have a problem in the system and you want to uh, take screenshots of what happened and what you see in the logs and what kind of error messages you got, you want to send it to your support team or to your developer and you want to be able to make screenshots and also process a screenshot in terms of like highlighting specific sections, cutting specific areas, adding comments. Yeah, and this is something you do with those tools. Yeah, I, I edit to specification documents. If I write a technical specification and find some spots in the standard code where I would suggest to add an enhancement or where I would suggest to, to copy the logic from, I might uh, take screenshots and write some comments inside. Or last example here, if you create mockups of dialogues, yeah, you want to enhance a standard dialogue, for example, for mo a mobile dialogue for the RF framework and you uh, take screenshots of the standard and then use the tool to create mockups of how the screen and the dialogue would look like in the future when a given requirement is being implemented. I added some, some logos here. You see it on the screen. I'm, usually, uh, I'm personally using Snagit. It's, it's not free, but it delivers a couple of features which I thought to be very valuable. But you can also work with the snipping tool, fast stone capture is one free way and also GreenShot is something where you don't have to pay anything for the start and, and you can check in, in uh, the video description also on the blog for this video. I'll give you the links to all those tools where you can get them 
and you can give it a try which one works best for you. With that, let's proceed with my tool number four. Now, tool number four is a password manager and a password manager with auto type feature. Uh, you know that especially those of you who are working as a freelancer or as external consultants, you are working with multiple systems, multiple clients, different password policies. You have to keep different usernames, different passwords in mind. It's impossible to use the same password everywhere. It's, it's insecure uh, in addition to that, but it's impossible due to the policies. So uh, you need something to help you memorize and also accelerate and make the login process more efficient and, and less annoying uh, due to the fact that you have to do that sometimes up to 10, 15 times a day. So I recommend using a password manager, not only for the subsystem, also for other logins, but especially for the subsystems. It helps a lot in terms of decreasing the amount of <laughs> annoying things that you do throughout the day. And uh, yeah, the magic really comes with the autotype feature. Yeah, I, I log into the system, I know that this system ABC with client 300, I type it into my, my password manager, hit the autotype key combination and I'm logged in. A couple of years before I was just using a notepad to save the data and then copy paste it from there and it was a mess, honestly. And last but not least, <laughs> of course, it, 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 it prevents and saves you from those desperate unlock calls. Yeah, I called them so <laughs> everybody knows this situation where you have to ask and call your colleagues or even worse the basis team to unlock your user because you mistyped your password multiple times and your user is locked. So your password manager will help you to avoid that. Tip number five, the last one and my personal favorite. And my tool number five is a mouse with function keys. Now why is this my personal favorite? It it was really a game changer when I started to use the, the function keys of my mouse. When I noticed that 80% of the navigation in a SAP system is basically done by the function keys F8 and F3. You should try this experiment on your own and you will notice that those two functions are crucial for navigating almost everywhere in the system. Uh, F3 for going back and F8 to execute a given function. Uh, just give it a try, uh, put a piece of paper beside you and work for 15 minutes and make notes whenever you have to hit F8 or F3, either on the keyboard manually or uh, by pushing the back button or the execute button. And you will notice that it's, it's a huge amount. And when I started to use a mouse with, with function keys, it was a whole new, <laughs> user experience for me and it was really enlightening. Yeah. I personally use the, the function keys which are close to the thumb and I use the front side of my thumb to execute something and the, the back part to go back. So I put the F8 key to the button which I reach with the front and F3 for the one which I reach, reach with the back. And that was kind of intuitive for me. And uh, in the meantime, it's somehow saved in my brain in a way that I use it automatically in the same way I, I, I use the, the right click or left click automatically. I don't have a specific model that I can recommend. I'm using a mouse from Logitech, but there are hundreds of different vendors out there offering mice with function keys and I would just recommend to give it a try and uh, check how that uh, feels for you. That is it. A short video this time. My five tools for EWM consultants that boosts or should boost your productivity or at least improve your user experience, make you more efficient and make your daily work a little bit more joyful. With that, I would like to encourage you to give me your, your tools, your favorites here in the video description. I'm very curious whether there would be something that also helps me that I do not use or do not know yet. So I would be really grateful to get your ideas also here below the video. And last but not least, I'm a, of course, very grateful in case you would give me a thumbs up for this video and subscribe to the channel in order to be notified also when I release the next video. With that, I wish you much fun with the tools that I showed you today and very joyful and successful work as an EWM consultant or developer in the future. Thanks and see you with the next video.